Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. Thank you for the life that Jesus brought to us. And as we feast daily in your truth, we live. Thank you for you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. But I declare today that burdens are being removed and yokes are being destroyed. By the anointing of your spirit, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. We are still on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now we are in verse 33. It says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You know, let me, let me try to explain what evil communication can be. Because when you see evil communication corrupt good man, you're thinking, hey, don't, join, don't follow unbelievers because they can, they can, you know. Now, who are unbelievers? You know, the word, as just as the word goes, there are unbelieving believers. Although it sounds funny, but, but get it. Because when we say believers, you're talking about real church people, right? Now, so when we say unbelieving believers, we're saying unbelieving church goers. That's actually what it means. You find there are pastors who are unbelievers. Oh, yeah. There are pastors like that. They are unbelievers. You tell, your, you tell the pastor, oh, look, pastor, I, I want to trust God. You know, for example, I think I've shared this before. You, you go to your pastor and say, pastor, I've been studying a lot from God's truth. And I feel, I, I feel strongly in my heart that I should resign my job because I want to put my faith to work and see it produce results. And, and, and I just want to have time to do whatever God wants me to do. And I think my job is a hindrance. Uh, how many pastors are going to tell you, well done, brother, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for that. I'm not saying I've been praying you, I leave your job, come and walk with me in the ministry. No, just, just someone who wants to express his faith. He said, I've been praying for you, and, and I know you're going to get to this point. Brother, it's time, and the Lord is going to see you through. Many people, I, I, I tell you, you can try it. Just try it. Out of ten, Maybe only two can tell you you're doing the right thing. Now, of course, you will not be doing the right thing if you had someone else do it and you want to do it too. You will only be doing the right thing when you can prove to yourself in truth that you heard the voice of the Lord concerning these things that you, you, you've, been, you've been meditating on. But most times, say, ah, brother, it's not like that. Too. It's not like that. You know, I was talking to someone and um, it, it's amazing. We were, we were having this discussion one time and then, you know how life can be so funny? Now you ask, uh, you ask your pastor, how did you get married? And he said, look, God just showed me my wife and I believed him and then I got married to her. If I just went straight and I proposed to her, see? And then, and you guys are how long in, in 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 40 years? Wow. Now you go to your pastor and say, Pastor, that girl is my wife. I'm going to propose to her. And say, hey, brother, do you have a job? And no, Pastor, I'm believing God. Eh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, you have to. Now what's going on? What's going on? Is it that God worked in your pastor's time and he's not working right now? Or is it that your pastor was telling a lie when he told those stories? See? Now what's happening? experience in this world have tampered with his belief in that area. Now, he, he can risk his own life for it. But he cannot believe easily that someone else can hear the voice of God like he did and get the same result. So we tell sisters, don't marry a brother who does not have a job Make sure your brother has have a job. If not, ha, ah, you will suffer. Pastor, when you married, did you have a job? Ah, you know, you know, then ah, there was a special grace. Has the grace expired? Now, this also doesn't mean people should become irresponsible. For example, sister, if a guy tells you he is believing God, you want to ask him, what has this your believing produced for you before now? Oh, yeah. Very simple. 
I will not tell you the brother must have a job before you get married to you. The brother must, must show that he is responsible. Let me tell you the truth. Our journeys are different. Oh, our, our journeys are different. There are people who will never start their journey until the day they get married. Oh, yeah. They will never find their bearing in life until the day they get married. So, so imagine his sister waiting for him to get his bearing. She's delaying. She, okay, she knows, yes, I, I, I sense in my spirit that this is my husband. But you know, before we go into this thing called marriage, we, we have to be careful. Get balanced first. He may just never get balanced until you come in. So, so what are you going to do? Or what are you supposed to do? Now, I'm talking about evil communication, corrupting good manners. Now, what is the good manners? Not eating habit or, what, you know, good manners of faith. Oh, yeah, good manners of believing in him. So now, evil communication is now corrupting this person. Who else why would have just followed God's word? God told me that's my husband. Then, they, you see, listen, I, I always tell people, you know, when they come to me, and so I'm thinking of um, getting married to this person. I want to prove one thing. Have you heard the voice of God concerning this? And, and there are ways to know. Not just saying, hey, you know, three years ago, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw her. I was handing over flowers to her. So that was the day I told myself, this is my wife. As wonderful as that may sound, it's not enough. There must be a progressive revelation concerning that thing that you have seen. See? But the moment you are convinced in your heart that the word of the Lord has come to you concerning getting married, then go get married. Now, what about the challenges that will come? The same voice. Listen, when God sent Moses to Egypt, did he was everything together? God will never wait for everything to be together before he sends you. He sends you and things will begin to arrange themselves as you go. But the mistake many make is this. They believe the Lord and they set themselves on the journey. Now, when they face challenges, they forget the Lord and they begin to try to use their own mind to solve the challenge. You can never use your mind to solve a challenge that came in your way of faith. <laughs> so imagine when Moses and the children of Israel got to the Red Sea. How did they get to the Red Sea? It was not a mistake. They didn't, they didn't, they were not stumbling until they found themselves. So, oh, ah, wow, see where we landed, Red Sea. Uh, what do we do? An angel was leading them by day and by night. Do you, do you get that? And the angel led them to the Red Sea and stopped. Imagine them trying to figure out with their mind how to cross, I think I heard they were about 3 million people. How to cross 3 million people. Think about it. <laughs> when are they going to start building the boats? Just think about it. But you see, when Moses turned to the Lord, the wisdom of God was made available to him. And they saw something they've never seen before. God says, stretch your hands over the waters and divide. Do you what? But what, he, what happened? He did divide the Red Sea. They walked you on dry ground, dry, dry ground. Now it became easy afterwards. When Joshua got to Jordan, ah, yeah, if God have led us to this Jordan, he is, the water is going to pass. So Lord, how, how what, what do we do? God said, tell the priests that bear the ark, they should carry the ark. The moment they step on that water, it will part. And that's exactly what happened. Now, they, it was easy. Um, Joshua didn't have to be beaten about the bush and wondering, how do we, what do we know? No, 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 he'd seen this happen before. Good communication, enhancing good manners. But evil communication will corrupt good manners. Did you see that? So don't just stay away from evil communication. Stay around good communication to enhance your good manners in faith and in your love for the Lord. Praise God. Verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Not everybody have the knowledge of God. Even those who have experienced some miracles doesn't necessarily mean they have the knowledge of God. It takes one who stays with the Lord to realize that, come, these miracles I've seen, there's a reason for it. 
There's a wisdom behind it. There's a knowledge behind it. Why is God doing all these things? Then he applies his mind to knowledge. For example, Jesus fed 5,000, um, the crowd, five, five, loaves of, um, two, five loaves of bread and two fishes. He fed the, the 4,000, right? And then now, you remember after that, when you study the book of Matthew, after that, he was walking with his disciples. And then he made a statement. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the Sadducees. And they began to think, oh, because we didn't carry bread. We didn't carry bread. And Jesus rebukes them. He said, what is wrong with you guys? How come you guys are thinking what I said was because you didn't carry bread? You know, Jesus said, have you forgotten the 5,000 and how many loaves were left? Have you forgotten the 4,000 and how many loaves were left? What's Jesus saying? By those two miracles, you're supposed to receive sense. That, hey, Jesus doesn't have any issue with bread. If anything that comes up with food, Jesus just knows how to sort it out. And we are with him. But they didn't get it. Every miracle that God does in your life is to give you a knowledge. But sometimes, we are not willing to stay until that knowledge comes. We just want to come out of that situation. And we will oh, praise God, thank you. And then you run. You will be on one spot for a long time if you don't learn. So, so he says, awake to righteousness. Wake up and don't sin. For some have not the knowledge of God. Now verse 35 says, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body, body do they come? He says, some men say this. And that's just normal reasoning. Okay, okay, we believe that um, the dead can rise. But what body? Because they are dead. Somebody who died. Imagine somebody who died. You know, you know, you know, for example, there are, there are places that were cemeteries before and then as the city be, begins to expand, those places are now used for residential areas or whatever, you know, you know what I mean by that. Now, so houses have been built on top of those, I mean, those bodies have decayed and everything. So like, so if the dead is going to rise, so what body? <laughs> All right. Now look how it says, doubtful. Doubtful. Why did he say doubtful? Because David said a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. So one who's reasoning like this is he's saying, how can God, yeah, nah, 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 this thing is, looks impossible. Yeah, that's why he says doubtful. Doubtful. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it dies. Except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. But bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain that means what you plant if it's beans if it's um, whatever grain you plant that's what he's saying but god giveth it a body as it pleases as it pleased him and to every seed his own body are you getting that now it is god that decides now for example a mango seed is inside the fruit right you don't plant the whole fruit to get mango. You eat the fruit. And then you plant the seed. Now the fact that you planted a seed that is white, for example, doesn't mean when it germinates and starts bringing out the harvest, you will see white stains. No! The fruit is inside. So it says God gives it a body as it pleases him. Are you getting that now? All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and body terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is one. So there are different kinds of bodies. Praise God. Now, he is explaining all this because this is so what body? So there are different kinds of bodies. The human body is not the same thing as the animal body. And then, see, there are celestial bodies. Now, that are, those are bodies that you don't, you don't use to stay here on earth. Now, I'm going to explain this further tomorrow because I've got to stop here now. Praise God. Our time is up. Father, I declare today a miracle is taking place. A new door of opportunity is opened to you. 
and you will walk in it and fill all your treasures with the blessing of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.